Texas Congressman Ron Paul and Washington Senator Patty Murray are with us on this Tuesday morning. We'll have each of you select another story from the morning papers as we get a call from Sylvania, Ohio, on our independent line. Good morning. Hi. Um, Mr. Paul, yes. I think this is just wonderful that you are on C-SPAN. You're one of the few people that are coming out and talking about the third-party effort and trying to make it fair. I was one of the people out collecting signatures for the Reform Party in both 92 and in um, other elections uh, for not only state and local but also national. The rules changed state by state. Right. We could not get... Everything that we did was, was just incredible to try to get done. Um, I wanted to make a comment also about um, Ms. Murray. I think your heart's in the right place as far as the tobacco. But we cannot make all of these rules and laws that we cannot back up. There is absolutely no way. You can't go into someone's home. Uh, the parents have to take care of the kids. We've already got laws on the books for tobacco. And if you want to come up to uh, my part of the, the area, come up on a boat on Lake Erie and watch all of the tobacco that's going across the lake to Canada where tobacco... <laughs> Now they've got packs of cigarettes up to five bucks, and there's a huge underground. <laughs> you can't control these types of things. Thanks, caller. I, I agree with you. Parents have responsibilities that they have to take. There's no doubt about it. But what do you do as a parent when you drop your child off at a daycare center or somewhere else, and you can't control that? You don't know going in whether the daycare operator or someone who's employed there is going to smoke around your ch child. Change. Um, <laughs> you, you know, there, Change there's some center. times <laughs> that there is... You may not know that, and and I think consumers have a right to know, and that's where we have an obligation to to take a look at that and say, is there something we can do to provide better information? Troy, Michigan. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, my question is, I agree uh, regarding the role of government. I think it should be limited. Government is involved too much in our lives. But my question is, if we were to get government out of our uh, lives, what would be the role of Congress? What what role would you have? <laughs> <laughs> Senator Murray, we'll start with you. And well, <laughs> I think Ron Paul has to answer this. And he's, he's the one that's you don't going want to put that us direction. Out of business, do you? Well, I'll tell you why. Um, I think that we have a fabulous transportation system. It needs it needs some changes. We're working on that. I think we have a fantastic public education system that was really put into this country to make sure that every child, no matter who they are, where they come from, how much money they have, gets a good education. We need that in this country. We certainly as a country have to deal in an international world, whether it's our my farmers in my state who want to sell their wheat uh, overseas or whether it's a company making a, a small product that wants to sell it someplace. And together, working together, uh, all of us, in a democracy, we can have a very strong country. Congress there are countries without governments. I mean, look at Bosnia, or, you know, look at Rwanda. Do we want to go there? I don't think so. I think we want to say, how can we collectively work, argue, debate, challenge, vote, but let's make sure that we're working together as a country. The one thing the caller does not have to worry about is that Congress is going to go out of business in the near future. Unfortunately, they're going to be too much involved in transportation, education, and medicine, all the things that but how do you make that aren't, happen aren't authorized, uh, really, uh, under the Constitution. You take transportation, for instance. Even in the 1950s when they started the interstate highway system, they even, and it, 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 that short a time ago, they felt like it had to justify it by the Constitution. They said, how are we going to do this? We're not allowed to do it. Oh, we'll do it for national defense purposes. There's no authority to run this educational system or the medical system. What would the Congress do under these circumstances? Uh, we would uh, take uh, an 80% cut in pay, we'd come up here three months a year, and we would have academic discussions on how we can improve the freedom of this country and turn government back to the states. And we would still be allowed to be citizens politicians. You could go home and teach most of the year, and you could come up here three months of the year. That would be the proper size government. Not to be the nanny state telling people who to smoke and what to eat and, and all these regulations, run the highway system, destroying our educational system, at the same time ruining medicine. I mean, we don't need any more government like that. We've had enough of that government. Back to the papers. Anything else catch your eye this morning? Either of you? Well, I certainly um, want to go back to the Washington Post article on the education initiative. The Senate today is going to be uh, talking about education uh, at the national level. I think that people across this country want us to have a strong public education system. Uh, and there are great, exciting things going on in many of our schools. I visit schools all the time in my home state. My daughter's 
Peters, a senior in high school. Uh, boy, there are there's great projects. Technology, the wave of the future. Uh, we are beginning to get computers into schools, and there's things we can do to improve our public education system. We need to train our teachers with the skills that they need. Uh, we need to make sure that our, our kids have access to, to quality schools where they can plug computers in, where they're safe. And there's, there's some really great in, uh, things going on. And finally, here in the nation's capital, we're talking about what we can do to make sure that we give a good public education. The Los Angeles Times editorial says public schools are in trouble, and they point out that Republicans would rather offer a small monetary reward to every parent who saves for educational expenses, including tuition for non-public elementary or high schools. The White House opposes this because the modest tax break would allow the use of federal dollars to subsidize private and parochial schools. On this, this issue, the president is right. And the headline of the editorial is, Don't Drain Public Schools. Well, I think it, this points out where, where they're coming from. The other side is that they, they don't want to encourage a private initiative. I would give every, every parent a $3,000 tax credit for every child in order to get privacy back into it. But I have one particular bill that I think makes this point very clearly. When kids try to earn their own money to go to college by selling animals at the livestock show, we tax them. Poor, innocent kids, you know, they don't, they're not even allowed to vote, and here the Congress is picking on them. They want to take care of themselves. Instead, we want to give them student loans that they don't repay. So I would say, turn responsibility back. Why turn this educational system over to the managers of the post office? I mean, it just isn't very good. Uh, you know, I, I, I don't know where you're coming from on that, but I can tell you this. Well, it's the federal uh, government. The, there are, the initiative that's in front of the, the, state, the U.S. Senate today uh, will allow people to put away money in an IRA and use the interest for uh, their child's education, public or, or private. The president is opposed to that, and I'm opposed to that and I'll tell you why. Uh, having been out and been a school board member, been a teacher, I can tell you that when you put public money into a private school, private schools will be held accountable to the taxpayers, just as public schools are right now. Most private schools do not want that. And separate from that, uh, we will rob from the public education system uh, uh, um, money that really could go in good things. We're going down a narrow road right now if we say that the only way to save public education is by sending kids to private schools. We have a responsibility in this country to make sure that public education works, and there's things we can do to make that happen. I hope the debate in the Senate today brings that out. And the Senate will get underway in about uh, five minutes. We have about two minutes left, so we'll get a call, and I have a fax uh, for both of you. Valparaiso, Indiana, good morning on our Democratic line. Good morning, and thank you for taking my call. Quick comment on the role of the federal government. Uh, I think the federal government should be be, uh, protect the people from our corporate overlords and their pawns in the state and local governments because there's so many different state and local governments and we need someone to help us. Well, I, I think this is great because I think the corporations are in bed with the government. I mean, you think of the back industry. How would they get into trouble? They're in bed with the government. Take, take these huge companies that need to export airplanes across the world. They come to the government and get their subsidies, Export-Import Bank. So I would say, yes, let's go after the corporations because they are part of the problem. They run this government and they come here. So I would agree with you entirely. The corporations and government, they, this is where the big welfare is. People criticize food standards. I criticize the welfare state to big business interests. That's why we fight these wars to promote all this weapon manufacturing. And so that these huge companies go over and get contracts in Bosnia and Haiti and all these, all these countries. So I would say I agree with the gentleman entirely. I mean, we have a corporate welfare state. We have corporatism. And the sooner we go after this, the better. And last, uh, an email from a viewer in upstate New York. Senator Murray just mentioned that her upcoming campaign will cost approximately $5 million. Could she please give us a breakdown of that money in the following categories? Individual contributions, out-of-state contributions, uh, the 10 largest contributors, and could Ron Paul answer the same question? <laughs> I couldn't off the top of my head because I don't keep that track of it, but I can tell you the vast majority of my contributions are from within my state, from individuals. My average contribution is less than $100. I have 14,000 uh, people who donate to my campaigns. The average donation is $58, and these supporters are from around the country, a lot of them in Texas, of course. Congressman Ron Paul, former Libertarian Party presidential candidate, now serving in the uh, U.S. House.